What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the ignition coils on this 2015 Jeep Wrangler. If you need this part or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. Take this cover off, just grab underneath, lift up, slide it forward. All right, so I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, and I'm gonna loosen up the negative terminal on the battery. It's always a good idea to disconnect the battery when you're doing a job like this. All right, I'm gonna remove this snorkel before I take the intake off. Um, I don't necessarily have to remove the whole thing, but I'm gonna remove it so it's easier to work on. Take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, take these two bolts out. Take a straight blade screwdriver, loosen up this worm clamp right here. And then on this side, I can grab this, pull it out. There is a intake temperature sensor right under here. Just push down on the lock, pull the connector out. Pull this hose off here. Now I'll just slide this out and out of our, out of our way. I want to disconnect this electrical connector to the throttle body. I'll just use a straight pick. I want to pull this lock out a little bit. Just like that. Once that's out, I should be able to push the lock down, pull the connector out. There's a little wire retainer right here. I'm going to slide that off just like that. Now I got it out. Let's pull that out. I'm just gonna use this trim tool right here. There's some things that are holding the wires on. These little wire retainers. Just slide behind, behind here. Just pry these off right here. We actually sell this tool at 1aauto.com. Pry that off. I'm gonna disconnect this map sensor. And just slide this wiring harness out of the way. Um, just pop this off here. Just like that. I'm gonna take this vacuum line off right here. I'm just gonna use these hose pliers. If you don't have hose pliers, you can try getting a pick um, behind the front of the hose. But these hose pliers work pretty good. Just twist it back and forth and slide it off just like that. You can try to use regular pliers on it. Um, just be careful, should be okay. I'm gonna take these two hoses off here. You can just grab them and slide them off. This goes to the EVAP system. And then this one goes to the PCV system. So I'll just take a pick, try to get underneath here. Oops. I thought that was part of the hose, but. All right, so that slides off like that. And you might see a little bit of oil in there. That's okay. All right, all these are, these hoses are in this bracket right here. I'm just gonna slide these hoses out of the bracket. All right, that's good. Just get those out of the way a little bit. Up on top, there's two retainers that hold this insulation on. So I'll just use the trim tool, take these off. Pop that up. Pop this one up. Just use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this bolt out. Take that out, set it aside, and do the same with this one. I'll grab this insulation, slide it out. There's two nuts right here that we need to take off and two nuts right here. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet to take them all off. 
Oop, try not to drop them. I'm just gonna take a magnet and grab this nut. And there you go. Got it. I'll take these two off. So now I wanna take all these intake bolts off, this plenum bolt. Um, there is seven of them. So there's three right here, three right here, and there's a hidden one in the back. Don't forget that one. I'm just using an eight millimeter socket and a long extension and a ratchet. For this last one, I'm just gonna use a universal joint. I just put uh, electrical tape on it. That way it doesn't move around as much. So that helps out a little bit. Can lose it, loosen this back one up. Slide it up. Oh, there's two bolts I missed. All right, so there's a little bracket right here. It's two 10, 10 millimeter. All right, so we'll slide these hoses out of the way. Actually, this hose, I'm just gonna disconnect right here or right here. Grab my hose pliers. Just so I can get this out of the way a little bit. And that one doesn't wanna come off there, so try over here. There we go. Slide that off. And I can move this out of the way a little more. You could use a uh, bungee cord and hold that out of your way if you want. All right, I'll take a 10 millimeter socket and my ratchet. I'll loosen these bolts up, take them out. All right, I got those out. All right, so the intake's loose, as you can see. Um, so there's these studs that go through this bracket and that's preventing me from being able to lift it right here and then same right here. Now you can't take those studs out because there's these little washers on the back side that are attached to those studs. And then over here, there's a bracket on this side that's preventing me from lifting the intake. So I can only lift it so high. So at this point, I'm gonna loosen up, take these two 10 millimeter bolts out right here. I'll just use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this bracket off first. Take that bracket off. So this bracket right here with those studs going through is preventing me from enabling to lift the intake right there. What I'm gonna do is loosen that bracket up from down below. It's easier to get to this bracket than the other side. The other side has a lot more stuff in the way. So I'm just gonna use a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And there's a stud right here. Loosen this up. It's either a stud or a nut. So loosen that one up. And then over here, do the same on this side. If you have trouble getting your hand in here, uh, you can pull the wheel well out and try to get it through the wheel well. All right, so that's loose enough so that I can pull that off so I can lift up on the intake. I can try to slide this out. Just getting caught on something. There we go. And slide it up. This is the bracket that was causing me trouble right here. You could just get a pry bar and just pry up on it a little bit. Not necessarily bend it, but just pry it out of the way while you're trying to lift up on the intake. So there's the intake with the gaskets. You want to be careful in this area. You don't want to drop any bolts down in there. It's a good idea to put some rags down. Just remember to take them up before you reinstall the intake. I don't push them all the way in because if you push them all the way in, you might forget they're in there. So just keep them out a little bit. That'll just prevent um, if you did happen to drop a bolt from actually going down in there. I'm just gonna pull this insulator up. Just slide that out of the way. Now we have access to both side coils and plugs 
it's nice and open over here. And the other side, you could actually do the other side without taking the intake off, but what's the point? You might as well get the intake off so you can access all of them at once. All right, so I'm gonna disconnect this coil right here. Just push down on the lock, disconnect the connector, take this 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Loosen up this bolt right here. Take that bolt, loosen it up, and then grab the coil, just twist it back and forth and slide it out. Here's the old coil. Here's the new coil from 1AAuto.com. You can see the shape is the same, the connector is the same. It comes with the same boot, and it comes with a bolt. Get yours at 1AAuto.com and you'll be ready to rock and roll. It's always a good idea when you take the coil with the new boot and take a little dielectric grease. Make sure the dielectric grease is meant for spark plugs and you just put a little bit in there. That's going to make it um, easier to install. It's going to prevent it from sticking and prevent corrosion. Take the coil, slide this on. Get the bolt started. Use a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. And we'll snug this down. Not too tight, just snug. And then take the electrical connector, plug it in. Then we're gonna do the same procedure for the other ones. All right, so I'm doing this coil last. This actually seems to be the hardest coil to get to, um, minus the coils under the intake. I'm just gonna slide it up. This bracket's kinda in my way. Oh, and that disconnected. Actually, that wasn't too bad. So you wanna pull this wire out a little bit. Normally, this would have been connected. So pull that out and slide this coil out. Okay, so to get this coil in, we'll just slide this in position. I wanna grab the plug, try to plug this in. You could try to take this bracket off, but it's very hard to get to those bottom two bolts on the bracket. Let's try sliding this down first. And lining this up. Okay, so that's lined up. I'm just gonna make sure I lock it in place. So it seems like when you push the coil down, you can get that connector in. Just take a pocket screwdriver. You could remove these two nuts right here and then move those hoses a little bit, if that helps you. And then push this connector on. and just make sure it locks down. And that's locked down. You can take your screwdriver and just double check, make sure it's locked on there. And this one's good. So we're good to tighten the bolt back down and we're good to go. I just put a bungee cord to uh, pull these hoses out of my way so it's easier to work on. I'm just gonna take this insulation pad, just slide this on like that. It's just gonna sit there right there. Now I'm gonna pull these rags out. It is a good idea when you pull these out just to look down the holes, make sure you didn't drop anything. Hopefully you didn't. And everything looks pretty good. All right, now I'm just gonna take a pick and get under the old gasket, slide it up. If there's some oil in there, uh, you can clean it up. Just take a rag. You could always use a little brake parts cleaner. Just, you're better off spraying it on the rag versus spraying it into the hole area because you don't want it to go down into the engine. Okay, so that's pretty clean. Take the new gasket, line it up, and just press it down. 
Then we'll do the same with the other ones. All right, with the intake, I'm just gonna take a rag, just wipe any of the oil off the intake here before we install it. Make sure there's no gasket material or anything on the edges, surfaces right here. That looks good. We'll take the plenum. We wanna try to fold this underneath this little bracket right here. So you're just gonna have to angle it like this. Get underneath that bracket. Make sure all the wires are out of your way. That's all lined up. Just wiggle it a little bit. Just gonna get these started by hand. All right, I'm just gonna snug these down with a eight millimeter socket, extension and a ratchet. Now I'm gonna use a torque wrench with the same eight millimeter socket. I wanna to torque these to seven and a half foot pounds. And you have to do it in a sequence. So you start with that back one. That's number one. Number two is right here. Number three is right here. Number four is this back one. Number five. Number six. And number seven. All right, I'm gonna put the nuts over here. Get this one started and this one. And I'll just take a 10 millimeter socket and the ratchet, snug these up. That's good. That's good. Then I'll take my 13 millimeter socket and ratchet and I'm gonna tighten the two studs up at the bottom of this bracket. Now I'll take this bracket, reinstall this. Slide that in position. All the nuts. Before I tighten those down, we're just gonna install these bolts down here. All right, I'm just snugging these up a little bit. I don't want these too tight. And then I'm gonna tighten up the nuts with a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And then I'll tighten these down, snug these down and then go back and just tighten the other ones down a little bit. All right, that's good, and that's good. Now we're gonna put these two bolts in where this bracket is. You might have to pull the bracket to the side a little bit to get the holes to line up. Now I'll take my 10 millimeter socket and ratchet and tighten these down. Just snug, it is tightening into plastic, so be careful. All right, at this point, I'm just gonna put this insulation back here. Just slide that in position there. Okay, we'll take these two brackets, get these started. They look like they're the same bracket. And then this one goes right here. I'll take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, snug these down. Do the same with this one. And just take this insulation, move it forward a little bit, push these push retainers down. That's good. All right, I'll take the spongy cord off. And take this pipe. This is gonna go on the bottom. It's gonna lock into there. I'm gonna slide it on over here. 
and then lock it in there. That's good. This next one is going to go right here and right here. That's going to slide onto the air box right here. All right. This last hose is going to go right here and right there. This line is going to go right here. I'll we'll take this wiring harness. This retainer is going to go in right there. Try to push that in there. Just like that. Push this one right here. Connect this connector right there. I'm going to connect this vacuum line right here. Just push that on. There's some push retainers on this wire harness right here. Push those back down. Make sure that's nice and secure. Push this retainer right there. Now we're going to plug this connector in right here and lock this lock down. Take this retainer right here, slide that right on there. Now we're gonna slide this snorkel on, get this in position. Let's connect the intake air temp sensor connector. Just lock that in place. We can slide the snorkel on that side and then slide it onto the air box. like that. Take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, snug them down. Now I'm going to tighten up these worm clamps with a straight blade screwdriver. Just snug. Same with this one. And reposition this hose. Just like that. We're going to take this cover, these two slots, we're going to line up with those two pieces right there in the back. And then these are going to go into these little grommets right there and just push it down. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now we'll take this negative cable, slide it on the battery, take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, snug this up. Make sure you wiggle the cable, make sure it's nice and tight. Thanks for watching. If you want the parts to do it yourself, check out 1AAuto.com, the place for DIY auto repair.